All right, today we're going to talk about basic graphing of trig functions. Now, this is something that can be difficult if we don't understand where we're coming from. Okay, and so when we're talking about basic graphs and trigonometry, we need to remember that graphing is really just a process of making a table and then plotting the values. Now we get the values from the table. Okay? And so when we look at sine, or when we look at y equals x, or we look at any type of function that we're going to be trying to graph, the key to making a successful graph, really making a successful table, is to pick values that help us. Okay? And so when we look at the sine graph, and here you'll see I've got my x, which is what I'm going to pick to put in, my y equals sine x, which is when I'm actually going to do the function, and then my x and y based on what I get when I put the function in. It's all about picking key values. Now, fortunately for us, we've been spending a bunch of time doing this by looking at the unit circle. And so, basically, we are going to start at 0. So when x equals 0, y equals the sine of 0, and if we look at our, our unit circle, we're going to find out that the sine of 0 is 0. So our x and y pair is going to be 0, 0. So we're going to be starting at the origin. Now, as we move around the graph, let's, let's just pick a couple of key points. I'm going to go to pi over 4 next. So y equals sine of pi over 4. Okay. Getting a little messy here. Let's see if we can clean this up. Yeah, there we go. Let's clean this up a little bit. Pi over 4. Okay. And so the sine of pi over 4, if we look at our unit circle, which I'm doing right now, is going to be 1 over square root 2. So our x and y pair is going to be 0, comma, 1 over square root 2, which is about 0. 0.7, oops, sorry, not 0, my x is going to be pi over 4. Now going down the line, I'm picking some other values, so here we go. I'm going to have pi over 2, because that's another convenient value. And as I'm moving along, I'm going to start to notice some things are happening here in my graph. And I'm going to pick my next value, which is going to be 3 pi over 4. Okay, so y is equal to sine of 3 pi over 4. Now, as we move around the unit circle, it's going to become abundantly clear to us that the sine curve is going to have um, a distinct look, which doesn't really it doesn't really surprise us because we've been using this for so long that we understand that the values are certainly related. So when I do the th sine of 3 pi over 4, I'm once again going to get 1 over square root of 2. So my value is going to be 3 pi over 4, comma. I don't know what's going on here. I've got some crazy lines going on. 3 pi over 4, comma, 1 over square root of 2. Moving around, I um, make my way to pi, y equals sine of pi, which is equal to 0 once again. I'm going to go to 5 pi over 4. Yes. It does take a while to fill in this graph, but you're going to see here in just a minute that we're, we're, we're moving towards something that's really actually kind of interesting. A couple more. I'm going to move this down just a little bit. Focus this in. Y is equal to sine of 3 pi over 2 which is going to give us something that's equal to negative 1. So we have 3 pi over 2, 
comma negative one. And if you don't know where I'm getting these values, we're looking at the unit circle. This is equal to negative one over square root two. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I think I might have made a mistake. Yep, right up here. Just got to keep those negatives straight. 7 pi over 4, comma, negative 1 over square root 2. Okay, and then I finally make my way to 2 pi. Y equals sine of 2 pi, which is going to be equal to 0. Now, let's, let's look at this when we look at the graph. We're going to use those points, and you have an advantage because you don't have to necessarily scroll down, but I am going to scroll up because I want to put on here my, my x values that are going to give me a good idea of what I'm working with. And so when I obviously start at 0, I'm going to go to pi over 4. Then I'm going to go to pi over 2. I'll make my way to 3 pi, pi over 4. Get these little hiccups in there. And I'll get to pi. I've got 5 pi over 4. 3 pi over 2, almost done. 7 pi over 4. And 2 pi. Let's plot these. I'll notice that my highest value up here, my biggest value, is going to be 1, you'll notice. And my lowest value is going to be negative 1. And so my graph needs to go from 1 to negative 1. And now I'm outlined. So I'm going to use this different color here, this pinkish red, to kind of start us out. I know my first point was 0, 0. And when I get to pi over 4, I am at 1 over square root 2. And remember, 1 over square root 2 is about 0.7. Okay. So I'm going to put that in up here because that's a notable value. So this is going to be about 1 over square root 2. And so we'll put in negative 1 over square root 2. Okay? So I'm going to go this way. Pi over 4 is at 1 over square root 2. You see where I'm, see where I'm getting these values? Right here? Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put them in. You can look back at your, at your um, actual chart that you made. But I'm going to stay down this way so you can see what I'm doing. Okay? And so then, when I get to pi over 2, I'm at my maximum. I'm at my 1. And then I go back down to 1 pi over 2. At pi, I'm crossing at 0. Let's catch up with it here. Pi is pi and 0, right there. Okay? And then when I dip down below the x-axis, I'm going to be at negative 1 square root 2. At 3 pi over 2, I hit my minimum, negative 1. I go back up to 1 pi over 2, 1 over square root 2, and here. I've graphed a complete cycle of the sine curve here. And watch what happens when I connect it. Okay? I've gone around the unit circle one time. One time. All the values around the unit circle one time. And this is what I get. It's like a little sideways sort of an S deal. This is the basic sine curve. It starts at zero, goes up, crosses the x-axis once, and then goes to, it ends up at 2 pi and zero again. Okay? So when we... When we look at example 1, and it says use the graph of y equals sine x to find all the values of x between 0 and 2 pi, for which sine of x is equal to 1 half, what we would do here is we would say, well, where is 1 half? 1 half is, well, halfway up, so about right here. And so we want all the values where this is true. If we look at what happens, we can use our unit circle to help us out, because if if it equals one half, we know that this right here is about pi over six, because our unit circle tells us. And this is going to be five pi over six. Okay, and so those are the values that our unit circle tells us, but our graph is also going to tell us those. Okay? So those are our values. So x equals pi over six and five pi over six. This brings me to graphing basics, a period. We graphed one period of pi for any function. y equals f of x, the smallest positive number p, p for which f of x plus p is equal to f of x. This means where does it start to repeat? OK. 
Okay, so when I get all the way here, I notice that it goes through this S curve, and then what would happen is it would keep going like this. All the way off the page. It looks the same here, but now it's gone through all of its values and it starts over. So the period is how long does it take it before it starts to repeat? So in the case of sine, notice it goes from 0 to 2 pi before it starts to repeat. Okay, so the period for sine x is 2 pi. Remember this value. The period is 2 pi. Okay, the amplitude. Amplitude. If the greatest value of, M, of y is m, so big, big m, and the least value is m, small m, then the amplitude of the graph of y is defined to be, and you might not be able to see that because I might be in the way, one half of m minus m. Amplitude. Amplitude, all that means is how far is it from the middle of the graph? So I take the maximum of one, the minimum of negative one, I subtract them, so it's going to be one half. One minus a negative one, which is one half of two, is equal to one. All right, so the amplitude is one. How far is it from that midline of the graph? Okay, domain. We know this from algebra. All possible x values, and the range is all possible y values. Okay, that's domain and range. Pretty simple. For what, for the sine graph, this is going to be anything, and this is going to be negative one to one for sine. Okay, now the easy way. We plotted a bunch of points, but here's what I want you here's here's what I want you to, to kind of get out of this. If I'm at y equals sine x, I know that the period is, like we said, 2 pi. And I know that it looks like this. Graph graphs like this. And it starts at zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to encourage you to do this. Halfway, it turns. So I know that if it starts at 0 and it goes to 2 pi, I know that halfway, it's going to be at 0 again. So that's going to be pi, because halfway to 2 pi is pi. Now, I know halfway between it getting back to 0, it goes to its high point. So this is going to be pi over 2. And halfway between the back half of the graph, so pi to 2 pi, it's going to reach its minimum. So I'm going to plot its minimum. And I know that its minimum is negative 1. I know that its maximum is 1. So really, guys, this is a, a game of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 points I plot. 0, maximum, 0, minimum, 0. And then I connect the dots. Because I know that at some point in all this, it's going to get to those points. Is this the most precise method? No, but it's a way that we can easily graph these in order to move them and shift them, and we're going to move into the next part of this part of this section. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Now we're going to go on to the section to the next part of basic graphing where we do cosine. We might talk about tangent a little bit, so stay tuned.